Howdy folks, how many ways are there to partition a set containing n elements? That's what we'll be talking a bit about in today's Wrath of Math lesson. We'll go over the first few examples, counting the number of partitions for sets containing 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 elements. At the end of the lesson, we'll take a quick look at something pretty cool called Bell's Triangle. If you need a quick recap on what partitions of sets are, check the description for a link to a lesson I did on the topic, but you might be able to get away just watching this lesson and you'll probably figure out what we are talking about. A partition of the elements of a set is like a sorting of the elements of the set into disjoint subsets. So let's begin with the number of ways that we can partition a set containing just one element. The definition will become more clear when we look at a set of three and four elements, but we're going to start with a set containing just one element. Now, of course, the particular elements that a set contains does not affect the number of ways we can partition the set. Only the number of elements within the set uh, affects the number of partitions there will be, so we're just going to use the counting numbers to label the elements of our sets. So how many ways can we partition a set with one element? Well, this is the only way. All we can do is take the one element and put it into its own set, so it's a rather boring and unenlightening example. The number of ways to partition a set containing one element is one. That's called a Bell number. The number of ways of partitioning a set with n elements is the Bell number Bn. Pretty cool, those are Bell numbers. So this, what we just uh, talked about, is the Bell number B1. It's the number of ways of partitioning a set that contains one element. And we found that that is equal to one. So I'll just sort of title this column up here, Bell, Bell numbers. So the Bell number B1 is equal to one. And for a set containing zero elements, B0, we define this to be equal to one. We say there's one way to partition a set with zero elements. Might seem kind of unintuitive, maybe not, but uh, you know, it's often troublesome to define something to be equal to zero. We define it to be equal to one and we move on with our lives. So B0 is equal to one, B1 is equal to one. Now let's check out a slightly more interesting example. How many ways are there to partition a set containing two elements? So we're looking at the set containing one and two. Well, we could take one and two and put them in their own sets. So we could put one in a set over here and two in a set over here. In order to save time, when we write out these partitions, I'm not going to write out all the set brackets. But just remember that formally a partition is a set containing the subsets that we have sorted the elements into. So just for this example, I'll use the brackets so it's clear. What we've done is put one into its own set and two into its own set. And then these two sets together, the collection of them, this is the partition. It's showing how we've sorted the elements of this set into disjoint subsets. Remember the important part of a partition is that the parts that we split the set into, they must be disjoint, so they have no elements in common, and if we union them together, they must produce the original set. So all of the elements have to be accounted for in some part, exactly one part, of the partition. Now the only other way we could partition this set is seen here, putting both of the elements in the same set, basically just leaving them as they are, and so we might put that in its own set to make clear that these are the two partitions. We could put the two elements in a set together, or we could separate them into two different sets. So the bell number B2, the number of partitions of a set containing two elements, is equal to two. All right, now for the last two examples, a set with three elements and a set with four elements, I'm going to drop all of these brackets from the notation. I'm just going to use space to help us visualize what the different parts of our partitions are. But remember, this is what a partition really is. We sort the elements into disjoint subsets, and then putting those subsets into their own set, that set is the partition. All right, so now let's talk about B3, the number of ways to partition a set containing three elements. 
So we'll consider this set containing one, two, and three. How could we partition the three elements of this set? Well, we could put every element in its own part, one, two, and three, all in their own part. Or perhaps we put one and two together and we separate three. Or maybe we put one and three together and we separate two. Or maybe we put two and three together and we separate one. Or the only other possibility is that we put one, two, and three all together. That's a total of one, two, three, four, five partitions of a set containing three objects. And so we see that the bell number B3 is equal to five. All right, so up next, the last example, we're going to want to count the number of ways we can partition a set that has four elements. So of course, we'll consider the set containing the four elements, one, two, three, and four. Before we start writing out the partitions of this set, now is a fine time to introduce you to a pretty cool recurrence relation. So as it turns out, even though counting the partitions of a set seems like a pretty simple problem, which doesn't mean that it has a simple solution, but it makes us think maybe it does, well, it doesn't have any nice, beautiful closed formula. There's no nice closed formula for every bell number, but there is a really cool, I think pretty beautiful, recurrence relation for the bell numbers. So here it is. The bell number BN plus one. To find that bell number, all we have to do is take the sum from k equals zero to n, so the bell number n plus one is the sum from k equals zero to n of n choose k multiplied by the bell number bk. So it's this pretty simple sum based on the combination formula, right? This is a binomial coefficient that counts combinations uh, multiplied by each of those preceding bell numbers from b0 all the way up to bn. Now, in a future lesson, we're going to prove this recurrence relation. In the very next lesson, we're going to work a little bit more closely with it and get a good idea of how the proof is gonna go. But for now, here's the recurrence relation. Let's just try applying it to see how many partitions there should be of this set with four elements. So we're trying to find B4. So in that case, our N value would be three because we're trying to find the bell number B4. So B4 is equal to the sum from K equals zero to three. And then this is the sum of three choose K multiplied by those preceding bell numbers BK. So what's this equal to? Well, we've figured out all of our preceding bell numbers, so it shouldn't be too hard. First, for k equals zero, we have three choose zero times the bell number b0, which way up there is equal to one, plus for k equals one, that's three choose one times the bell number b1, which is one. And then for k equals two, we've got three choose two, uh, multiplied by the bell number B2, which is two. And then for K equals three, we've got three choose three multiplied by the bell number B3, which is five. Really neat recurrence relation. Okay, so then uh, three choose zero is one times one is one. Three choose one is three times one is three. Three choose two is three times two is six. Three choose three is one times five is five. This is equal to one plus three is four plus six is 10 plus five is 15. So just using this super sick recurrence relation, we see the bell number B4 should be equal to 15. There should be 15 partitions of this set with four elements. All right, let's start finding those partitions. We could put one, two, three, and four all in their own separate parts, their own separate subsets or perhaps we put one and two together and we leave three and four separated. Or maybe we put one and three together and we leave two and four separated. Or maybe we put one and four together and we leave three, or excuse me, we leave two and three separated. Or maybe we put two and three together and leave one and four separated. Or maybe we put two and four together and we leave one and 
three separated. Gonna try to go in a logical order here, but I'm probably gonna get some stuff mixed up, so excuse me if it's a little hard to follow. All right, so then what else do we have? Well, maybe we put, we put three elements in a part. So maybe we have, let's say, one, two, and three together, and we leave four in its own part. Or maybe we put one, two, and four together, and we leave three in its own part. Maybe we've got one, three, and four together, and we leave two in its own part. Or maybe we have two, three, and four together, and we leave one in its own part. All right, how many partitions do we have so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Should just be five left to go. All right, so for the final five partite sets, there's one I kind of missed up here where we could put three and four together and leave one and two in their own parts. Besides that, we've also got the possibility of putting one and two together and putting three and four together. Or we could put one and three together and two and four together. Or we could put one and four together and two and three together. And the last possibility, hopefully you can still see it down here, is we put one, two, three, and four all together in their own part. That should be all 15 partitions. Let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So now if that's easy for you to read and you wanna look at it, there it is. But I'm gonna go ahead and draw some lines to make it a little easier to see which partitions are separate. So if it was a little hard to read before, hopefully that maybe helps you make some sense of it. Probably could have done without the vertical lines, but hey, I'm doing my best. <laughs> I can only do so much. So pause, look at that if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and erase it, and we're gonna look at one last cool thing to end the lesson called the bell triangle. But just note, we just confirmed the fourth or fifth bell number, B4, is equal to 15. So now let's go ahead and erase all of these 15 partitions and take a quick look at this cool triangle. There's a good chance in combinatorics especially, you are familiar with cool triangles like Pascal's triangle, for example. So what the heck is Bell's triangle? Well, it starts like this, like any good combinatorial triangle. We got one at the top. Then what? Well, for each row, we or for each following row, we take the last number of the preceding row. So we'll start with one. And then we add the the column of height two to get the next number. So we add the preceding column of height two to get the next number. One and one, that gives us two. And then we don't have a number up here to add with two to get the next number, so we stop. It'll make more sense once we do it a few more times. We take the last number from our row and drop it down to start the next row. Then to get the next number, we add up the preceding column of height two. So two plus one, that's three. Two plus three, that's five. Now we don't have two numbers to add, so the row stops. We drop five to the beginning of the next row, add the two numbers. Five and two, that's seven. Add the two numbers, that's 10. Add the two numbers, that's 15. We don't have two to add, so we drop 15 to the next row. Well, let me take a breath. Okay, and then 15 plus five, that's 20. Add the two numbers, 27. Probably could have done some better spacing here. Add the two numbers, that's 37. Add the two numbers, that's 52. All right, we'll stop there. This is just a quick look at the triangle, not supposed to be comprehensive, so don't worry if you don't quite follow what I was doing. But notice, we've got the bell numbers. We've got the bell numbers going down this way and the bell numbers going down this way. Turns out, spoiler alert, uh, the number of ways to partition a set containing five elements is 52. And instead of writing out those 52 partitions and being afraid you missed one or double counted one, hey, you could just do this triangle. That sure is a lot easier. So look at that. B0 is one. B1 is one. B2 is two. B3 is five. B4 is 15. Isn't that beautiful? Just like that, that's Bell's triangle. These are some Bell numbers. There's your occurrence relation. There are some examples of counting the partitions of sets. I'm gonna stop now. 
and have some water. So I hope this video helped you understand how to count the partitions of a set and a little bit about these bell numbers. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'd really appreciate a small donation or small monthly pledge on Patreon. You can see links for donation stuff down in the description. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. Raising the Tobago's, we growing like fresh tomatoes. Them boys on fire, two fuego. We pass it round hot potato. Everything is new wavo. I'm with my sweetie like Quavo. Need my cheese, need that queso. Need my bread, need that bankroll. Wake up, yes Lord, I'm thankful. Another day on my schedule. Steady blocking the devil. I tell a hater, God bless.